in Sumter County, South Carolina. Corporal Pat Riley's number one concern is making sure his peaceful southern town stays just that, peaceful. You try to prepare yourself every day you go out there, but you never know what's going to happen. But on a seemingly average day in 1996, that peace was shattered. Paul came out saying that it was a vehicle headed south on 15 North into the town of Sumter running vehicles off the road at a high rate of speed. He has no idea that behind the wheel of this white sedan, a mentally unstable man is in the throes of a psychotic episode. By the time Riley catches up, he can see the suspect is a menace to everyone on the road. The almost 1053 vehicle. Why would anyone risk so many lives, including his own? Even the suspect seems to have no idea. Appears to be a white man. He's putting his hands up in the air like he doesn't know what's going on. Well, at the time, we didn't know why he was driving. The speeds he was. We were traveling anywhere at speeds at 100, 110 miles an hour. Corporal O'Reilly can only watch as the suspect repeatedly veers into oncoming traffic. Over and over again, he narrowly misses head-on collision. Affirmative, affirmative, across the county line, about a half mile in. After so many brushes with death, any sane man would pull off the road. But this isn't a sane man. Another unit lays down a stop stick. The driver swerves around the spike, but he can't hold the road. Okay, he's 10 15, he's 10 15. Unbelievably, after three heart stopping revolutions, the suspect regains control. Negative base back on the road. I thought it was over. I thought it was, and I was really astonished he was back on the road again. Again, the chase is on. 10 10, he's got it back on the road. The driver avoids a second stop stick, but a third one takes out a tire. The units be advised he just went through another, another stick. Even with a flat, this suspect madly accelerates into the town center. For a moment, it looks like Corporal O'Reilly has lost the white vehicle. But he catches up, just as additional units join the pursuit. Hey, the stop. Negative. Ten Next to this gas station is a daycare center. The cop in the lead sees the chase is headed toward the children and makes sure it goes no further. With no bystanders in the way, the officer has to make his move. But now the whole gas station is a bomb, waiting to go off. The first priority is evacuating the terrified children. But the driver remains in his car. Too deep in his own madness to even care about the flames engulfing his vehicle. Gas tanks are fire. Riley and the other cops now have to save the life of the same man they've been chasing for miles. They even brave explosions to rescue him. The cruiser bulldozes the car to safety. But there is still the threat of a massive explosion. Unbelievably, once the car rolls free, the suspect tries to keep running. He's taking off again. He had a reflex. I think he hit the accelerator and tried to speed away once again. But the police have learned to expect the unexpected with this guy. They quickly surround the car. The door handles are blistering hot from the flames. So they try more direct methods. Only a hundred feet away, the flaming gas pumps remind the officers they're running out of time. Inside the car, the disturbed man struggles. He tries to yank Riley through the shattered window. It takes nearly a half a dozen cops to drag the man out of the car, and even more to cuff him. But finally, it's over. Top pursuit I've ever been in. I mean, it's uh, the longest, the most scariest. Don't want to do another one like that. Police were able to halt this madman's rampage before it claimed a life. The driver later admitted to not remembering most of the chase. But Corporal Pat Riley will never forget the terror of this day, which began with the wail of sirens and almost ended in a ball of fire. <laughs>